All right, so we're doing cardiac. So we're doing, oh, that's, I chose red, I promise. Hold on. There we go. We're doing red hearts. All right, doing heart stuff today and next week. And then you have a test uh, on heart stuff coming up. All right, so we'll be going over all heart things, which is nice. It's all, you learned about EKGs, which is the electrical part of the heart. Now we're learning about the muscle part of the heart and the coronary vessels feeding that muscle. All right, so the coronary vessels might get blocked, right? And that will then cause the heart to fail. All right, so first, when, before it fails, it will cause chest pain and a uh, myocardial infarction, right? And infarction is just a fancy word for saying blockage, right? Or obstruction, or it's a, the muscle has infarcted, meaning that it's, there's no flow to that muscle. And eventually, if they don't die, they will then have impaired muscle activity afterwards, right? And that impaired muscle activity is known as failure. So we have congestive heart failure we're going to be talking about, all right? So we talk about ASCVD, which is an important uh, reason for heart disease, right? And vessel disease for that matter. We learned about diabetes was an important vessel problem, and that will cause, that can lead to ASCVD, and diabetes itself can lead to heart disease, right? And we'll talk about CAD, and that's the coronary artery disease. That's the coronary arteries feeding the muscle are getting impaired, right? So usually ASCVD can do that. But there's other ways we can we can shortcut that by like like smoking coke or something. And then uh, what else? We got uh, CHF we'll be talking about. And then we also have two little sections we'll tag on. We'll probably do that uh, as self-study or at another point. And that's where you learn about valves and about um, infection of the heart, whether the, all three layers of the heart, whether it be the pericardium, some, I promise that was intentional, draw a yellow sack around it, or the myocardium or inside the heart, heart itself, right? That'd be uh, endocarditis. Okay, so that's an overview of what this little section will be talking about. And then next week we'll be talking about hypertension, which is more vessel stuff, right? But everything outside the heart. So hypertension to your kidneys, hypertension to your vessels. Is this lecture today is all about the heart and the coronaries. So atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, that's the new term for atherosclerosis. So it used to be atherosclerosis, and 20 years ago, they changed to ASCVD. So if you hear someone saying atherosclerosis, they are more than 20 years old. So that is, the, right now it's ASCVD. You'll see that everywhere, right? Everyone that's been trained after 2000 should be using ASCVD, right, in their notes, and their the patient has history of ASCVD, okay? So ASCVD is silent. It's a, it's, you don't get symptoms. ASCVD, you can't, oh, my arteries, I, they're getting a little bit full right now. That's not a symptom, right? But what you do get is the complications of ASCVD. So ASCVD does have diagnostic tests that let you know that your vessels are not, not, uh, not doing great. But uh, really, it's the complications that patients present with. They present with a heart attack. They present with, uh, uh, with a stroke. They present with all kinds of ASCVD events. So we'll talk about ASCVD events. I think it's in the next slide or the following slide. So an event can be anything from just a stroke or heart attack all the way to death. Right, that's an ASCVD event. Okay, so it's leading cause of death worldwide. All right, and it's a, and it, even if when you do have it, it, it reduces your amount of one uh, daily. What do they call it? Daily adjusted life years, disability adjusted life years. So once you do get one of these complications of ASCVD, your life is reduced. Right, so we want to you know prevent it as much as possible. All right, so in was it 18, 1800s, 1890s World Fair. So this was, you know, people paid money to see this. It's like, look, look at this guy. Look how big they are. Look at this woman. Whoa, that is crazy. They paid like a nickel just to, to watch that. And that's like, that's like, you know, five, ten bucks nowadays, right? So that was 1890s. And now that's everywhere you look. You don't have to go very far to see that. Okay, so that is an unfortunate event of America, right? And also worldwide, right? The accessibility of diet and the accessibility of not being accessible to, to exercise, I don't know, being sedentary is a huge uh, risk factor of developing our um, development of ASCVD and developing the complications of it, including the mortality of, right? This is looking at mortality. That's how many people are dying of ASCVD, all right? So they are having, you can see right there where we're at, it's a little dark red. Dark red is not good, right? Obviously, populated areas, if you've ever been to the south, you've had some of their southern food, all right, that uh, might be explaining it, but there's, this is a development of where we've gone in the last 150 years. 
All right, so heart attacks were just being diagnosed. It was, you know, people had chest pain, people had myocardial infarctions, but it wasn't everybody. It was those who were, um, they might have some other risk factors going on, but this was a, a new thing over the last 100 years, right? It was once a disease of kings and queens because kings and queens could eat whatever they wanted. They says, I want some McDonald's, and McDonald's arrived, right? I want some Arby's, and Arby's arrived, right? So they, it, all, it all arrived, right? And now you can Uber Eats it, right? So they can Uber Eats it. That's just a fancy, you know, that's just, you know, we've reduced the amount of steps for Uber Eats as a king and queen ourselves, right? We just need to pull it up and someone carry, you know, draws up a, cor a carriage with a lot of horsepower and it makes its way to our to our uh, our mouths very quickly i'm guilty of that as when i'm in office here in the late uh, late saturdays and i have somebody you know, uber eats my meals to me so I'm, I'm guilty all right so risk factors so there's an ASDVD risk uh, calculator where you punch in a bunch of numbers it'll tell you your, your risk of dying from ASCVD or your risk of getting ASCVD complications. So that little red QR code, you can do that right now and punch in your numbers. And you, if you know your lipid panels, then it'll, it'll be pretty accurate, right? It'll give you your risk of developing a uh, complication of ASCVD, a vascular complication. It'll give you a risk of mortality as well. All right, so this is fuzzing out here, but you can see it has a What's it got? 36% lifetime risk of getting ASCVD right here, right? 1.5% risk of an ASCVD event in the next 10 years. So one in 100, or you know, about one in 100 chance of getting an ASCVD event in the next 10 years, right? And that's actually mine. So that's my 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 call, waking up card or my call card. What's the word I'm looking for? A wake up call, right? To make sure that I can change some of the numbers. I can change some of these modifiable risk factors, right? There are some things that are non-modifiable, right? Being a man, being a woman, right? So also certain ethnicities will put you at higher risk of ASCVD and race can put you at risk. Genetics, especially if your family has it, puts you at risk, right? So if your mom or dad had a coronary artery disease, they had an MI before the age of 55 or mom had it before age of 65, that puts you at higher risk of getting ASCVD. All right, hypertriglyceridemia. That's just too many triglycerides, and that's a genetic thing. All right, but we have some people like that that de develop this, right? And then arteriosclerosis. So as you get older, you cannot you cannot modify that, right? So as you get older, your arteries harden. That's a natural thing. The arteries get stiffer as with age, and therefore that puts your more at risk of. ASCVD complications. Also estrogen is cardioprotective, it's vascular protective. So it is also, that's why uh, females are have a higher uh, protection than the males. Until, but once we're 60, both 65, we both have equal risk of getting ASCVD. So modifiable things, going back, smoking, that's something we can stop, right? Smoking is a uh, inflammatory stimulus it's going to cause great inflammation and it's not just tobacco it has all kinds of other weird stuff in it so that can lead to inflammation and smoking itself causes vasoconstriction which is going to cause hypertension and hypertension does little donuts throughout your vessels right and it tears up the parking lot it tears up your vessels and that allows ASCVD to grow all right and we'll talk about how it grows the pathogenesis of how ASCVD happens so stress and inflammation. So inflammation is going to be an inflammatory things are going to like think of it like spicy burningness going through your vessels and it's going to damage the vessel walls. And that's going to cause our vessels to expose itself for ASCVD to take hold, right? And we'll explain what's going on. So ASCVD, when it takes hold, is going to be a narrowing of your vessels, right? It's going to cause that vessel to not work great. And then eventually this ASCV can pop and then now you get a clot that happens right away. And that's, if that's a coronary vessel, that causes what complication? Causes a heart attack, an MI, a myocardial infarction. Okay, if it's, going, if it's a, a brain vessel, a cerebral vessel, a cerebral arterial, what would happen then? You get a stroke, right? So you get an ischemic stroke of some sorts, right? And then if it's going to your kidneys, you get kidney failure. And you have kidney failure, what happens then? Now you can't get rid of the inflammatory mediators. The inflammatory mediators are now around for longer, right? So that's why we have a CKD is a modified risk factor. We've got to figure out how we can get our CKD from progressing. So when we learn about CKD, there's five stages and really stage three is the point of no return. After you have stage three, four, five kidney disease, you cannot recover your kidneys, all right? But stage one, two, and three A, you can, you can have, a, you do have a chance of bouncing back. 
And then metabolic syndromes. We learned about metabolic syndrome for diabetes, and it's a significant risk factor also for ASCVD. It's a significant risk factor for hypertension as well. So we mentioned obesity and being sedentary, an increased waist size, right? So men greater than how much? Greater than 40, right? Women greater than 35 inches will put you at risk for a uh, metabolic syndrome. And then really to have metabolic syndrome, is all these things independently can cause ASCVD. But when you have three out of five, that's really going to put you at risk for developing ASCVD, diabetes, hypertension, and all three of those things are problems. Those, all those three things have vascular issues, right? And then hypertension can develop with uh, many other reasons, but it can also develop due to ASCVD, due to diabetes, for instance. And if your blood pressure is more than 130 over 80, you can fix that. You have an opportunity to rectify that. And next week we'll talk about uh, hypertension and some strategies. And luckily it's the same strategies we do for ASCVD. So there's, not, there's a lot of overlap here, which is nice. Okay, so then diabetes itself. So an A1C greater than how much? Six and a half percent starts crystallizing hemoglobin onto your hemoglobin, crystallizing uh, sugars onto your vessels and your vessels get hardened. That's called hyaline arteriosclerosis. Arteriosclerosis in any variety is gonna cause uh, like drying out and crackiness of the vessels and that little, that crackiness is gonna allow our fats to develop on that, uh, that vessel, okay? And then we got lipids. So we'll talk about lipids and their lipid profiles and why the lipids are the way they are. But these are our numbers here. So total cholesterol, LDL, HDL, and triglycerides. All these things, if they are poor, that's going to be a risk for developing ASCVD. And that's modifiable. We can fix that unless we have like hypertriglyceridemia. But other than that, if it's not a genetic reason, it's a, you know, a McDonald's or Wendy's -ish reason. That's the reason why our diet intake is not great. That can put us at risk for our LDLs going up and our HDLs going down. All right, and we'll talk about why your liver would, would decide to make more LDLs or make more HDLs, because all your liver is fault, really. Your liver is the one that's in charge of either making more LDL or making more HDL, okay? So we want to not trick the liver, but we do want to manage the liver and tell it, hey, make, make more HDLs for me and reduce your LDLs, right? So what else on this? So we got all these risk factors that we want to fix. Okay, and there's a worldwide impact of ASCVD. Cardiovascular disease is you know, almost more than double the next cause of death worldwide, which is cancers, right? And cancers are due to inflammation as well, and obesity, it's all interrelated, okay? So cardiovascular disease is up there in the top 10. It's actually number one. Diabetes is there as well. And the diabetes puts you at risk for cardiovascular disease. So it's all going to interrelate. So we'll try to tease it out as much as possible, but sometimes it's hard because it all leads to the same thing. So complications, these are the things it leads to. It leads to an atherosclerotic event. And, and this event can just be straight up death, all right? Oh, they died, why'd they die? They had ASCVD and they died of one of these things here, all right? So you get to give it head to toe. So you can draw yourself a stick figure when you're teaching this to each other. Think, like, okay, head, what's gonna happen if I have ASCVD of the head? Well, which head are you talking about? Uh, if I'm talking about the, the penis, that is going to be erectile dysfunction. Erectile dysfunction checks out, right? That actually happens before uh, you have a heart attack or before you have a stroke. But head, head, that's going to be uh, it's going to be your strokes, right? You have an ischemic stroke, so a, a stroke that develops due to thrombosis. And we'll talk about what, uh, why it would thrombose. Why does that? Why does that even happen? Why, why do the platelets even bother with that atheroma? Why can't they just go around, right? So we'll talk about that. So the heart, uh, coronary artery disease, so CAD, is an important complication of ASCVD. And we'll talk about that next, right? So CAD we'll talk about as an important complication of uh, ASCVD. So symptoms of CAD we'll talk about are stable angina. So what is angina a fancy word for? chest pain. So if you have chest pain, it could be cardiac chest pain. And we have to, as RNs, we have to realize, we have to let the doctor know, hey, they have these things that are spelling out anginal chest pain or spelling out cardiac chest pain. Because if you tell the doctor, oh, they just got chest pain. It's like, okay, whatever, I'll just give some, give some morphine. All right. But if you tell them they have chest pain, that's radiating the left arm and it's pressure-like and it's non-pleuritic and it's non-positional, they're going to perk up and it's not going to be like, you know, uh, Charlie Brown, wow, 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 chest pain. But as soon as you start saying all the, the important things, they're going to start paying attention, and that's very important.
Okay. So once you have a CAD, you can get ACS, and then that MI can happen. All these things fall under CAD. And then after that, if you might recover from the MI 100%, if you got intervened upon quickly, right? You had the chest pain, you went to the hospital, they fixed your, your coronary vessel that was not working, right? The coronary vessel blocked, got completely blocked to your heart. And then we needed, they opened it up in the heart and so opened it up in the cardiac cath lab, right? Within 90 minutes, great. You have a great recover, a chance of recovery. If they didn't, then you have a risk of developing CHF and other complications too, but CHF we'll be talking about, okay? So MI to CHF. And then the brain, poor perfusion of the brain we talked about, you're gonna have a cerebral vessel that's not working, that's, that's blocked, that's called a thrombotic stroke, right? An ischemic stroke of some sort. And then it could be a, a big, uh, sorry, a small vessel in your brain, or it could be a big vessel in your neck. That's called coronary, or, sorry, that's called um, carotid artery disease. So your carotids feeding your brain can get blocked and they can even break off pieces of atheromas up into your brain. And those can ha last for less than 24 hours, which is called a TIA, or they can cause permanent blockage, which is an, again, an ischemic stroke, okay? And then after a while uh, of just having ASCVD, it's like, oh, no big deal. It can develop Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease is an important complication also of ASCVD. And then what about your kidneys? So going down to the kidneys, all right, so we talked about the brain, the heart, then the kidneys are next, we're going head to toe. So the kidneys are, they can get blocked and if they don't get blocked, they're going to lose their function. And why is that bad? So what, I lost my kidneys. Well, your kidneys are gonna now not be able to get rid of these inflammatory markers, inflammatory things from your obesity or other things, like smoking for instance, and then now you're at higher risk. It's now circulating around more, causing more damage to your vessels. And then also the kidneys get rid of fluid and your heart doesn't like excess fluid, that's gonna cause some CHF as well. So that's an important reason for CHF. And then CHF is actually an important reason for CKD. It's all, it's a, all a vicious cycle. Okay, so the volume overload itself can lead to CHF. And of course your kidney can just up, outright fail and that can lead to, that has a really high mortality in of itself. All right, then periphery. So not talking about the brain, not talking about the heart, not about the kidneys, what about everything else? That's called peripheral arterial disease, so or PAD. And we'll talk about that next week. Uh, hypertension is an important reason for that, but PAD, you have no flow to your legs, no flow to your, to your arms. Usually the legs are the first thing they complain about, and they don't have, uh, they have, you can't say you have angina of the legs because angina means chest pain. So instead of, instead of that, they said, I know something simpler. Let's just call it intermittent claudication. Okay, cool guy, <laughs> you're, you're fired. All right, so they, we'll talk about intermittent claudication and all that stuff next week. But that's just chest pain of the legs, all right? So pain in the legs as I'm walking, 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 and I get leg, leg pain. You have a sign of ASCVD and PAD, all right? Which PAD being a complication of ASCVD or you're walking, 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 and you get chest pain. That is angina from ASCVD, right? Specifically, what complication? Coronary artery disease, all right? That's the complication. If you're walking, walking, walking outside the hospital, you usually have stable angina. If you're just at rest, and all of a sudden, bam, you got chest pain, you have unstable angina. And we'll talk about this on the CAD slide, all right? And then that can lead to a full-blown MI. Okay, so this closure of these vessels here can lead to a stroke, heart attack, peripheral arterial disease. Okay, so we talked about all these modifiable and non-modifiable risk factors here. I changed colors, I promise. Nope, okay, it doesn't like purple. I like purple. So it's going to all these things, all these dyslipidemias. So dyslipidemia is a fancy word for saying your fats are whack, all right? So whack fats. So what does that mean? That means your LDL is abnormal, your HDL is abnormal, your triglycerides are abnormal, or your cholesterol is abnormal. So any one of those things means your lipids aren't great. And because of that, you're at risk for an ASCVD event, okay? So if you have an ASCVD event and you survived, you didn't have death as an ASCVD event, you probably are gonna be on aspirin now. So it's time for aspirin. So we'll talk about aspirin as well. All right, so aspirin is needed. And then also we're probably gonna get you a statin as well. Statins usually our go-to bread and butter medication for ASCVD, all right? Because you can say, oh, go ahead and change your diet and exercise. But how many people actually change your diet and exercise? 
it's like less than less than three percent that, that you know providers they tell them hey you know you have ASCBD it's important you change your diet and exercise uh huh mm -hmm, okay I understand and then they don't all right so usually they you know, they can assess that and like in three months like hey you haven't changed we're getting you a statin now okay so then these are our complications here in red uh, acute MI a triple A what's a triple A Abdominal aortic aneurysms. We'll talk about that next week as well. That's a complication of hypertension. So it's a that is a hypertension is a significant uh, complication of ASCVD. So it's like one, two, three. It's, you get ASCVD, then you get hypertension. And hypertension can go either way. It can cause a stroke. It can cause heart damage. It can cause CHF. It can cause the kidneys to die. It can cause your vessels to literally rupture like a, a blown tire. Okay. An embolic stroke we talked about. Uh, thrombotic stroke, MI, so all these things we're going over this semester. These are important things that we're going to be addressing. All right, so we'll learn about each one of these guys. There's a little pyramid, so we can recommend, you know, diet and exercise, go ahead and fix that, but there's some socioeconomic problems, right? You can say, go ahead and buy some organic vegetables. Like I live in this inner city, there's, there's it's a food desert. There's no way for me to get vegetables in, in my diet, right? Or they don't have the money to buy it at, at all. Okay, so there's there are some things that hold them back. That's that's a problem that America needs to fix. They need to sit, give them more access to things so that we can, you know, have better outcomes. Because this costs a lot of money. Strokes, heart attacks, all those things cost Americans a lot of money. Okay, and you can develop chronic diseases, and the chronic diseases, each chronic disease you add on to someone is a whole bunch of money in of itself. But that's that even not even just outside the money thing, it causes patients to die. So that should really be the, the motivation to fix these things. And then you can't just you don't just get like a stroke once. You get a stroke one, two, three, four times. You get a heart attack one, two, three, four, five times. These people usually go in, they get their they go to the cath lab and get their coronary vessels opened up, and they feel like it's a tune-up. Right? Usually they come out and they say, oh, I just, I just got a tune-up. I had this already like three years ago. Well, the next one that might not be a tune-up. You have got two major coronary arteries. Right, one going to the left and right side of your heart, and this the you know, left side of the heart is much more important than the right. Maybe this time it was the right. Maybe this time it was just a little tiny branch of the left, but it could be the left main artery to the heart causing death. So pathogenesis. So how does ASCVD even happen? So ASCVD again, any kind of damage to a vessel is going to make it a breeding ground, right? So like if you ever did clay activities in art school, not art school, but art class. Right, it felt like art school. But if you ever did like some clay activity, you got to score it, right? And then that makes things stick better. So they, that's what's happening. That's what that's a breeding ground for ASCVD. So if we make it arteriosclerotic or hardened, right? So what are some examples of making someone arteriosclerotic, making their vessels harden? What's that? Eating bad. Eating bad could do it, but really it's what? So diabetes is an important reason. Getting old is an important reason. And how does eating bad make it make it all a, a breeding ground and make it have cracks and crevices? Cholesterol, Cholesterol does what? It, it makes plaque. It makes plaque, but it, what, how did it? Because it used to be slippery, right? And then the plaque slips away. So obesity itself and all that, all those triglycerides and those free fatty acids produce adipokines, right? That's inflammation. All that inflammation is going to eat away at the vessels, and then it's going to that now that's a perfect way for your fats to, to deposit on the vessels, right? And then just straight up smoking, right? Your smoking is just inflammation, right? And then whatever other activities you might do that are going to cause uh, your vessels to get hard, uh, get uh, damaged in some for form. Sometimes just hypersaturation of your cholesterol and hypersaturation of those things might cause it to, just to deposit on its own, but usually there's something that's the stimulus for ASCVD to take hold, right? The more diabetes you have, the higher risk of ASCVD you have. The reason is because diabetes lays the framework for it. Okay, so first you get a little fatty streak. It's just a little fat streak on it, and then it develops into a full-blown uh, atheroma. An atheroma is a collection of fats and other fun things. Those fun things being there's foam cells in there, which are little macrophages which try to eat away at the fats. There's fibrin in there. There's collagen in there, and collagen is really where it's at. Well. For who? It's for the platelets. The platelets, when they see collagen, they're like, oh my gosh, you know, say no more, right? And they're going to change their shape. They're going to, you know, get dressed. They're going to comb their hair back, and they're going to go ahead and latch onto it, right? And they latch onto it, and a platelet gets activated. 
what happens? That creates, that activates the coag cascade. And the coag cascade goes into place, the platelets, and the coag cascade triggers the plate, more platelets to get activated, and platelets can go in, inactivated to activated. It's like, it's like a puffer fish. It goes from just a nice circle to a huge star, right? And it's going to then block this pathway 100%, right? It's going to get 100% blocked. And if that's a coronary vessel, that leads to what, what complication? MI. To an MI. What if it's a brain? Stroke. Stroke. What if it's a what? A kidney. It's going to be kin kidney damage. If it's a peripheral arterial disease, right? The leg is now dead, right? They cannot move their, their leg. Okay, it's extreme pain. That's worse than intermittent claudication, right? Just like stable angina is not as bad as a, an ST elevation MI, right? A STEMI. All right, so what, how did this happen? So there was, you, yes, you have the fats available, you have the triglycerides, free fatty acids, and what's going on is we have LDLs. And LDLs are low density lipoproteins, and we'll talk about them more, but LDLs are the ones that, are, that deliver cholesterol to the periphery. The liver literally makes them because you're eating so much cholesterol, it's like, you know what, I don't need all this fat, please get rid of it. And so they hire more drivers, they hire more Amazon truck drivers, they say, please ship this away from the liver. I don't want it, please stop. It's like when you get so much junk mail and then you say return to sender, that never works. But either way, if it worked, it would go out to the periphery and says, you know what, you guys, you, you don't pay much, you don't do 500 functions like the liver does, here and it offloads them, all right? It's like when it says no dumping sign and there's, there's actually dumping there. So it's all, it's all being brought to the periphery and to the peripheral tissues. And ironically back to the liver and causing some more liver damage, but it goes to the omentum of the belly and it goes to the kidneys and deposits there, deposits everywhere, including the vasculature. So all those LDLs are taking the fats and the cholesterol specifically and depositing it out here in the periphery, whether it be the coronaries, the cerebral, the kidneys, wherever it's depositing it, elsewhere okay so that being it's like a, no big deal you form a little fibrous cap on it but then it's actually thinned and that thinning will then pop one day all of a sudden and bam now you've exposed collagen and what does collagen do activates who the platelets and the coag cascade itself so this co coag this clot starts forming and then now 100% occludes the vessel. It might be partial if you're lucky, but it's usually going to, it's going to cause some blockage and cause a definite ASCVD event that we just talked about, okay? So when you just have dyslipidemia, that just means your fats are whack, all right? Just whack lipids. So then you, get, you, went to the, you went to the provider, first good, good first step, right? You went to the provider, hey, what are my lipids, what's my lipids look like? What's my risk of, of getting an ASCVD event, right? They'll punch all your numbers into that calculator on the first slide, and they'll say, hey, this is your risk, right? And then they'll probably ask you, do you have this, this, this uh, ASCVD uh, sequelae already, okay? But otherwise, it's like, oh yeah, I do have heart disease. Well, shoot, we probably figured out the reason why. Let's bring down the lipids and let's also fix your heart disease. Or let's fix, you, know, you had a history of strokes, what, and they come to the hospital, have, I'm perfectly healthy, I run every day, but what do you eat? All right, you eat all this other stuff and you have all this diabetes as well, that's, what, that's why you came in with a stroke today. That's why you came in with this leg that is not working today, okay? So again, CAD. You're going to get cardiac chest pain, and we'll specify what cardiac chest pain is versus just uh, pleuritic chest pain. What's pleuritic meaning? The lungs not having pain, and it hurts in my chest. Well, maybe it's just because you were coughing all night. That's the reason why you have chest pain. It's not pain from your coronaries. It's pain from just the coughing. Or you have pain from your gut, right? Based, that could also be due to diet as well, right? They have a bad diet, and they have acid reflux, all these other GI reasons for chest pain. So it's important we distinguish that. All right, so then the stable angina or ACS, and we'll talk about the difference there. Those all fun, fall under CAD, it's all an umbrella term. Just like we talk about SVT and PSVT, SVT is the overlying umbrella. CAD is the overlying umbrella for heart problems, all right, due to ASCVD, due, due to blockages. All right, so then you get an MI, and if you survive the MI, you're probably gonna get CHF. Unless you got intervened upon right away, you, were, you understood the nurse's instructions the last time, and they said, hey, if you have chest pain like this, please go to the hospital immediately, right? Some people say, I'm just gonna sleep it off, I'm fine, right? So it occurs just with 40% blockage. You think that's like 90% blockage right here, right? Well, just 40% blockage can cause coronary artery disease, right? It could cause our coronary, to us to have symptoms of coronary artery disease. And of course, we mentioned erectile dysfunction is an important first indicator that they have they have the coronary vessels and the 
penile vessels are the same size. And you, ASCVD does not, does not discriminate. It's going to deposit these fatty streaks everywhere throughout the body, and they're going to start accumulating like those fancy time lapses of a building being made, right? And then all of a sudden, it's going to then cause erectile dysfunction, right? Or a CAD event. And then PAD, we mentioned, the symptoms of that being intermittent claudication or worse, critical limb ischemia. That's where our leg is like really not on fire, but it's, it's just 100% hurts a lot. And that's definitely people are going to seek out help in that case. And we'll talk about PAD next week. All right, and CVA, so be fast are our symptoms for CVA. And for the next exam, not this one coming up, that will be, we'll talk about all the stroke stuff. All right, so that, that's just a precursor to like ASCVD is an important reason for strokes. So is diabetes, and so is what arrhythmia? AFib. AFib. All right, still there. All right, you didn't all, you didn't, we didn't lose it all on the test. And then uh, AD is Alzheimer's disease. So Alzheimer's disease is an important re, uh, sequelae of ASCVD as well. I'm not sure why I'm being so fancy. An important consequence of ASCVD. All right, and then hypertension, also a silent symptom, it has no symptoms. You don't have symptoms of hypertension, just like you don't have symptoms of, of ASCVD. You have the symptoms of the complications. So once hypertension has caused a triple A, a aortic aneurysm, then that's gonna be symptomatic. Once it causes your vessels in your brain to rupture, that's symptomatic. Once it causes your, uh, you know, different other complications, that's gonna be one that seeks out healthcare. So what happened? Well. Your BP is 200 over, over 110. I think that might be the reason, okay? So once you're one, over 130 over 80, that's considered hypertension. And really, we should hopefully catch that early when they go into the doctor routinely, and then we can then get that trend around with antihypertensives, right? Also, if we figure out ASCVD was the cause, we should give some medications for to reduce the ASCVD. All right, so complications of hypertension, you got aneurysms, you can stop seeing, you can get kidney disease, you get a stroke that's hemorrhagic, which is much worse than an ischemic stroke. Right? You can't really fix a hemorrhagic stroke. It's just thoughts and prayers. There's nothing you can do. You've got to wait it out. Sometimes if it's big enough, we can crack the skull open and let it, let it expand a little bit. But other than that, we don't have any kind of fix for it. And then CKD has many signs and symptoms. And for our final, that's what we'll talk about CKD and all the symptoms and management of how to fix and what renal failure is all about. All right, so an atheroma can rupture, causing acute thrombosis. If it didn't cause the other things slowly, it will just rupture all of a sudden. And then now we have a clot that's going to completely occlude our, our vessel, and, allow, and that whatever was distal to that vessel is now going to have symptoms. Okay, so fatty streak happens first, then plaque develops, the plaque ruptures, exposes the collagen, and then now we have whatever, um, whatever, that, whatever was distal to that. Acute coronary syndrome means it was a coronary artery. It could be the brain causing a stroke, all those things. Okay, any questions on how atheromas and all this stuff leads to complications? So how do we prevent this? So what's the, what's the fix? So we, we're going to do all the diet exercise stuff. We're going, to do, we're going to teach them all those things. And then, yes, the next step after that is make sure they take the medications. But what kind of things can we do to fix our, uh, our ASCVD? And luckily, this is the same stuff we do for CAD, the same stuff we do for hypertension, the same stuff you do for CKD, the same stuff you do for strokes. So it's very nice. So we just, that, that's it, just copy and paste it, all right? It's like when your patient asks you, hey, I got a stroke, what do I do? Well, you can do A, you can do B, you can do C. You don't remember all of them for the test you do, but for, for your patient, you just say, oh, these are the things you can do. And you, as long as you can spout off three things, you're gonna sound like an expert. Okay, so what are those things? So lifestyle changes, we can do aerobic exercise, same stuff as diabetes, not different, 150 minutes a week. So if you're doing 30 minutes, how many times a week? Would be 150? Five, 30 minutes, five times a week, you're golden, okay? Diet, same stuff as diabetes, plant-based, Mediterranean, high quality stuff. That's gonna be the recommendation for diabetes, the recommendation for everything cardiac, everything vascular, basically. And then cigarettes, can you have one cigarette? No. And then as we'll find out, cholesterol only comes from one source and that is animal sources. So it's just the same thing as like, hey, can I, eat, you know, you tell someone to go from two packs to five cigarettes a day. You tell someone to go from two hamburgers to turkey burgers a day. So turkey burger still has cholesterol. What are you doing? All right, it's still, it's still a source of cholesterol. You can limit it, that's fine, but it's, it's like, just like saying limit your cigarette intake, limit your cholesterol intake. No, you should eliminate your cholesterol intake. That's the best thing to do. And that's why plant-based kind of wins out over Mediterranean. Mediter you know, fish don't have as much cholesterol, but they still have cholesterol. 
And yes, the Mediterranean is, is much better than an American diet. So of course, it's going to have a lot better outcomes. All right. So I need cholesterol. I need protein. Well, the cholesterol, you, you recycle your own cholesterol. We don't have a problem with that. You have way too much cholesterol. It's, you're perfectly fine. All right. You're, so then alcohol. So ETOH, ETOH itself gets converted to fats by your body. So that's not good. That's fats are fats. And then also ETOH vasoconstricts. Well, that's not good. That's hypertension. So that's all. That's the reason why alcohol or ETOH is not recommended. All right. So cigarettes. What do we do? No cigarettes, knock it out, right? The patient starts smoking, hopefully not in the hospital, the auction nearby, you're gonna slap it out. If the O2 is nearby, you're definitely gonna slap it out. All right, med adherence, they gotta make sure they take the diabetes meds. If they have diabetes, you don't, with diabetes is a, it's like, it boosts you up like five, five, five to 10 points. It, it puts you at risk for heart disease, puts you at risk for kidney disease, puts you at risk for um, all of these things, atherosclerosis, ASCVD. So then you take their diabetes meds, make sure less than 7%, right? That's a good checkpoint. Say, hey, your diabetes is under control, but look at your, your triglycerides. We gotta fix that, right? And then hypertension meds. So they gotta fix their hypertension. So if they have hypertension or if the blood pressure is high, they gotta take their meds to get that under control. All right, so hypertension meds are an important thing to fix. And that goal is 130 over 80. So that's across the board. It's not different for anything else. Okay, so then aspirin, who gets aspirin? Those that have an ASCVD event or have an important, they've punched the numbers into a risk calculator. They say, hey, you have a 10% risk of getting a uh, ASCVD event. Well, let's give you aspirin. So aspirin, why aspirin? What's the purpose of that? It's an antiplatelet. Remember, platelets were the, the triggering factor. Once they saw collagen, psh, they pop open, right? And they then form a clot. So if we prevent a certain percentage of them with aspirin, we have better outcomes, we have better, better chances. It used to be that you gave aspirin to everybody, like Oprah. Like, you get aspirin, you get aspirin. You're over, over 50, aspirin. 40, aspirin. 30, aspirin. But no, now we, we're a little more reserved, and we, they say, okay, only if you have risks, right? That's the reason for aspirin. And then statins. So we'll talk about statins in more detail, but statins are an important re way to reduce cholesterol, all right? Diet and exercise is going to be better, but statins are like, as far as like all the drugs we can use for reducing someone's lipids, all right? Statins are like five points again above the rest, right? They have the greatest reduction in fats. And then cholesterol goals. So we'll talk about all of our fats in detail. Not sure if it's the next slide or not, but HDLs, we want those high. HDLs are heavenly. HDLs are hood. I don't know, good, all right? HDLs are what you want, okay? So that's, that's what we, our goal is to bring those up. And then what about LDLs? LDLs are evil, they are low, they are, they are Lucifer, I don't know. They are things that you do not want, all right? So you want those out of your body. You want that reduced. And then triglycerides and cholesterol. Well, cholesterol is technically just a, a measure of your LDLs and HDLs together, so you want that low, of course. But triglycerides, we want those low as well. Okay, and we measure all those out and we wanna make sure all those numbers are good. And then why do we need cholesterol in the first place? Why not? Why do we even bother making, uh, why does our body even do this? Well, it's for all of our cell membranes. Our cell membranes are made of cholesterol. You need cholesterol for your cell membranes to be functional and steroid hormones require it. So they are, do have some purpose, but you don't need it in the, in the amount that you get from an American meal. That is way too much cholesterol. Your body's gonna package that away, right? Who packages away? That's insulin, right? Insulin's gonna pack away those, those fats that we eat. Okay, where does cholesterol come from in real life? That's just animal products. So ideally, if they can avoid it altogether, perfect. All right, we will recycle all the cholesterol we have. We'll, it'll do just fine. But how do we kind of put this into perspective? What's the mnemonic? It's just the ABCs. So if you want to sing to yourself, A, B, C, C, D, D, E, E. That is all of the, that's what you have to do for your um, patients with any kind of vascular problems or ASCBD. So A, B, C, there's no like, uh, sorry, A and B, there's no like small letter. You can just think of A, B, C, A, B have their, there's no like small A or small B. But A is what? Take your aspirin. All right, so aspirin is an important thing to take. So aspirin is great, all right, if they have risks for it. And then B, B for blood pressure. So get your blood pressure under what? 130 over 80. And then C, that stands for cholesterol. There's two C's. It doesn't matter which one comes first. 
and but cholesterol probably is more important. So that's why it gets, it gets the capital letter. So C is for get your cholesterol under control. And we'll talk about what control looks like, right? So get your triglycerides under this amount, get your, your total cholesterol under this amount, get your LDLs under this amount, get your HDLs above this amount, HDLs being good or bad? Good, okay. And then cigarettes. Do you want to recommend cigarettes? That's a no. So they should cease or cessate their cigarette use. All right. So they should not take any cigarettes. And we, I think, did you learn about this in, uh, in 101 about cigarette cessation and such? How to get people to stop making smoking? Okay. So yeah, you want to, they want to quit smoking. There's all kinds of strategies you can do to make them stop. Okay. And then diet and weight. So D for diet get their diet under control. Weight you can think of kind of goes with hand in hand with diet is get your waist size under how much? 35. 35 if you're female, 40 if you're male, get your, your pear apple shape, shape on. Pear is better. better, right? So don't, don't be apple shaped. And then also weight wise, BMI wise, get your BMI under, definitely under 30. Okay. And then diet, we recommend what kind of diet? For all these guys, Mediterranean or plant-based are, are better than a regular diet. And then uh, what else? So for the next thing is D for diabetes. So diabetes needs to be under control. What is a diabetic that's under control? So the A1C is less than 7.5%. And we're going to start them on their diabetes meds, make sure they take their meds, make sure they are compliant, right? And the last thing is E, and E is for exercise. How much exercise? Aerobic, what kind? And... About 150 minutes or 10k steps per day and we're missing an e what's the last e e t o h so e t o h is our last e where we're, we're going to dis discourage right they also put like e for economic factors that's just something to consider there's there's you know some of these things they might not be able to afford their stat their cholesterol medications not be able to afford aspirin not be able to afford a good diet or weight regimen plan right now we can get a personal trainer to help them lose weight all right, so these are things that can drive our patient not to be able to reach these, um, these goals, right? These cholesterol goals. Are right, any questions on what to recommend? So these are your nurse interventions for pretty much every vascular disease process, right? Someone has a stroke, A, B, C, D, E. Someone has a um, hypertension, A, B, C, D, E. I might spice some other things in there like a low salt diet, but other than that, this is all the same. We're gonna copy and paste it and we'll tell you what's different for the other disease processes. All right, so lipids. So this is just to explain the lipids. What you have to know from this slide is right here, right? That's what you have to take away from this slide, but if you, this will explain the reason why your LDLs are what they are, and the HDLs the way they are, and the triglycerides. And also this explains our medications that are coming up, everybody's favorite are medications. So when you can understand how it works, then you're going to understand, oh yeah, that medication leads to this, this. That medication has this problem. That medication has this outcome. Right, so HDLs, I, t I colored green, green is good. So HDLs are what transport, they are little trucks that transport cholesterol from the periphery to the liver. So the only reason why the liver would make more HDLs is when the cholesterol levels are low, right? Cholesterol levels are low, it's like, well, shoot, I need to, I, let's, let's fire up some more HDLs, have them take cholesterol from the periphery. HDLs will literally go into the atherome that's developing the periphery, eat it away and bring the cholesterol back to the liver so the liver can make more things, right? And what th how does the, and also make more things, but also um, absorb more things. So the, the liver's like, hey, the cholesterol levels are low. What do I do? I, let's absorb more cholesterol from the diet. How do you get cholesterol from your diet? Well, it gets absorbed in the gut, right? So our gut is going to absorb, here's the intestine right here. It's gonna absorb all these fats from your gut into your, uh, into your, portal circulation into your liver. So the only way it does that is through bile salts. And bile salts are what help you absorb fats. You don't have bile salts, you're not gonna absorb fats. The fats are going to squeak out the anus and that's going to cause uh, some bad smelly poops. So that's a, that could be a problem, but also it's, uh, you know, some of our medications, that's, that's, that's all why, that would, why the medication is probably third place. It's hard to sell that one to people. But uh, that's what the liver is going to do. It's going to say, hey, I don't, I don't have enough cholesterol. Let's make more bile acids. And the bile acids are made of cholesterol. So it's going to spike up HDLs. And it's going to use the cholesterol you already have and form it into bile acids to then absorb more cholesterol. 
So it uses cholesterol you already have, and it takes cholesterol from the periphery, and ironically makes those HDLs, or so makes those bile acids to absorb more cholesterol. But we are, you know, hopefully we have a good diet, we have a good exercise, and then that's going to eliminate all these things, right? So when cholesterol is high, though, and that happens at ASCBD, we're going to, we don't need to make HDLs. We have plenty of cholesterol to go around. There's no reason to hire HDL drivers. HDL drivers bring cholesterol to the liver. Liver's like, I got way too much LDL, or more, too much cholesterol. I need to get rid of LDLs, right? Uh, there's no reason for me to hire HDL. My H, your, and then your HDL level is going to be low. But what's going to be high, the liver's like, I need to get rid of these things, and you're gonna hire multiple people to get rid of these things, these, these things being cholesterol. All right, so LDL is going to be fired up. You're going to hire all the LDL uh, truck drivers, and they're going to load up with cholesterol there. LDL is made of cholesterol. It's a little protein that soaks up all kinds of cholesterol like a sponge, and it takes it away from the liver. And where does it deposit it? In the periphery on the vasculature, and your LDL level is going to be very high. You have a lot of these truck drivers taking cholesterol away from the liver and putting it out into the periphery. Okay, so LDLs are not good. That's what you want to take away. You want to reduce someone's LDLs. You want to lower their LDLs. All right, so your LDL is normal, less than 130. If you have ASCVD already, we're going to drive the number down all the way less than 70. All right, that's going to be great. That's going to definitely make it so that no LDLs are being, no cholesterol, courtesy of the LDLs, is going to be deposited out in our periphery. All right, so LDLs and also VLDLs, but these guys are transport cholesterol to the tissues. Do we want these? That's negative, right? So when your LDL starts getting higher, definitely greater than 190, that is, hey, you got ASCVD. Congratulations. That is not good. That's a bad congratulations. So you don't want to have your LDL skyrocketing, specifically more than 190. Automatically, they have uh, dyslipidemia. They have an important risk factor for ASCVD. Okay, so you want your LDLs to be low. Okay, so the low the LDLs are going to be out of business now. So they're out of business and they don't they're not able to transport any kind of cholesterol to the periphery. And now the liver's like, you know what? I don't need you guys. I don't need 190 different truck drivers. We're going to get rid of you guys. We're going to get all the way down to 50, just in case these people have a, a bounce back, right? At some point, I guess, but. These, you're not, you don't need these LDLs anymore. So LDLs go down with diet and exercise. They go down with these cholesterol-lowering medications. All right, and that's the, that is our goal. All right, next is total cholesterol. And total cholesterol is just the sum of all your other cholesterol above, including VLDLs, which is from your diet. So you can, you can calculate how much total cholesterol someone has, but really the LDLs and HDLs is where it's at. That's really what you are targeting. All right, and then triglycerides. So triglycerides don't need LDLs to get transported. Triglycerides just get into the, into the serum and then insulin is going to deposit it into the periphery, right? Into the, into the adipose tissue. So, but they're still important because adipose is important. Or not important, it's an important reason for ASCVD. So we want to have a way to, uh, we want to track it and make sure it doesn't get too high. And what is too high? That is greater than 150. That's too much triglycerides. Okay, with excess fat intake, triglycerides get stored away, and then that will then cause a, these adipose inflammatory stuff to get out and start causing not only risk for diabetes, but also causing our vessels to get inflamed and get damaged. And then now we get fatty streaks and atheromas. Okay, so with exercise and other healthy intake and such, we can get it less than 150, and that's what we want. And then bile salts, we talk about bile salts. Bile salts are the only way you can absorb cholesterol into your, uh, into your gut and into your bloodstream. So bile salts are made of cholesterol, ironically. So do you want more bile salts? Kind of, but you have to be really working behind the scenes also to lower the cholesterol. But bile salts you want to, uh, they, they can be stopped. We have bile, uh, bile salt antagonists. We have things that stop bile salts from being made with medications, and therefore you're not going to absorb cholesterol, right? Not, and you're going to reduce your triglyceride in uptake. Same thing if we block the fat uptake right directly in, in the bloodstream. We can block it directly there with certain uh, transporter inhibitors. So we have medications that do that as well. Okay, so our goal here again is get our LDLs low, HDLs high. If you have, uh, how do you know, you want it greater than 50 really for HDLs? But for female and male, there is a discrepancy, but basically less than 50 is bad. 
right? Greater than 50 is good for HDLs, less than 50 is bad for, um, for to, to, which tells you you have ASCBD as, as an important ASCBD risk factor, I should say. All right, am I gonna test you, hey, the HDL is 45, is it male or female? No, that's way too specific. All right, and then uh, cholesterol. So cholesterol is the total amount, your LDL plus your HDL, plus the little portion of your triglycerides, a fifth, technically. And that's, if that's greater than 175 three times in a row, that's you got uh, dyslipidemia. Dyslipidemia is the first step of ASCVD, right? Now the next step is the complications of it. And then triglycerides, we said greater than 150, is it good or bad? That is bad. We don't want triglycerides. We want to reduce that, right? So again, these are our cholesterol goals. So H is for healthy HDLs. You want your HDLs to be high or low. H should be high, H for high, and L for low. You want LDLs to be low. All right, so HDLs take the cholesterol from the cells and from the tissues and from the adipose, and they bring it to the liver. That is their job, right? If you have way too much cholesterol in the liver, is the liver going to hire more HDLs? Is it going to produce more HDLs? Is it going to upregulate the production of HDL receptors and HDL proteins? No. So we want to give, we want to reduce our cholesterol overall so that our liver is like, hey, cholesterol levels are low. I need to make more HDLs now, right? And now we'll then, you know, you're kind of fooling the liver to make it make more good things, right? More heavenly things, right? And then LDLs, of course, are good or bad. LDLs take the cholesterol from the liver, right? And they're going to truck it away out to the periphery, to the tissues, to the vasculature, and deposit it there, right? It's, it's like overflowing, okay? So bad cholesterols or LDLs. You'll hear about VLDLs sometimes, but LDLs and HDLs are the two things that we're, we're going to be targeting. So healthy HDLs are taking the cholesterol from the tissues and put it back to the liver, whereas our LDLs, our lethal LDLs is another name for it, are going to, our triglycerides for that matter, are taking the cholesterol away and the triglycerides are being deposited in the adipose and that's inflammation, all right? If not just ASCVD.